Hello and welcome to another episode of Fishery with me, Andy May. Now, we're at Docklow Pools today. Uh, I know I always say like every fishery I go to is my favourite commercial, but literally this is my favourite commercial in the whole wide world. There's something for everyone here. You've got speci waters, you've got sort of open match waters, you've got snake lakes. There's literally something for everyone from great big catfish to, to great big carp. Uh, all different variety of methods and uh, baits work. Obviously, I'll go through them later on with you. I'm fishing a lake called the Mickey Mouse today. Um, it's full of all things fishiness. It's got my favourite species in the whole wide world, Chubbin. It's got the second best species in the whole wide world, Iden. It's got loads of roach in it, there's skimmers in it, there's loads of carp in it as well, but have you noticed how dressed up I am today? It's proper cold. It was minus two when I set off this morning. It's probably about two degrees now, so whether the carp will feed or not, I'm not sure, but one thing's for sure, them silvers will definitely feed. Now, I've been known to be a bit lucky, so if we snare a carp or two, then yes, all the better. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll give you a quick brief, you know, rundown of each lake as we come to them. Uh, starting off on this one behind us, which is the, uh, the Match Lake. Uh, and then, as I say, I'll talk you through the tactics and that that you can hope to adopt should you come here, and I definitely recommend you do come here, uh, to get straight out and put some fish on the bank. So let's start off with the match lake then. Uh, this is like your typical lake you've got here at Docklow. It's sort of three and a half to four foot deep. Loads of great big angry carp in. Uh, lots of F1 skimmers, loads of different fish. Baits like pellets are probably number one on here, but casters and maggots, my personal favourites to use. Again, they'll catch everything swimming. If you notice, there's a couple of islands in the lake as well. You know, chucking a little feed up to them, that works fantastically well. Uh, we're coming into what we're in now, end of October. This lake's due to be actually drained and, you know, all the silt taken out of it anytime soon. Uh, so that'll be really interesting what happens to it after that. All the fish are like being taken out, put into another lake, then getting put back in. So it'll be completely different for them. So the fish will probably be on the, on the feed. Uh, which, come to think of it, I'm pretty hungry. So... Uh, I'm gonna go and get myself snarled up in a great big greasy breakfast and then uh, we'll go through one of the other lakes and then go and snarl some fish on the Mickey Mouse. Fish! Okay, on to the Moby Dick Lake now then. Uh, and this is actually a link to the lake that we're going to be fishing today, the Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse has got more sort of silvers in. It's got loads of carp in it as well, but it's mainly sort of iron and chub. The Moby Dick has got more sort of uh, F1s, your crucians, your tench and stuff like that. Uh, again, similar depths to sort of the Max Lake. It's three and a half to four foot. Shallow fishing works particularly well through the summer on sort of pellets. And then coming into sort of this time of year, where it's cold, maggots and casters dominate, but also corn. You know, it's quite, they're all quite clear waters. All these lakes here are spring fed, so the waters are pretty much clear ish all year round obviously you get a bit more colour in the summer um, but any sort of like bright bait like corn or bread white maggots things like that work particularly well this time of year uh, so if I was coming on here for a session I'd be having a swim feeding maggots out of my hand short sort of six metres and then I'd have one long sort of with pellets on maybe two swims pellets in corn you know ten o'clock two o'clock and just keep rotating them just try and get them dirty great big bronzed F1s Jeez. so we're on to our next lake after I don't know which one we'll go to I don't know what do you reckon I reckon we go to the Special Lake. Let's come see if we can waddle out some great big catfish. Okay, so we're at one of the Special Lakes here now, or the Special Lake, I suppose, at Docklow Pools. Major Bill. This was actually one of the first lakes ever dug here back in 1972, I believe. So it's been around a long time. Uh, what more and more sort of commercials are catering for now is, you know, the specimen inside of it. This lake in particular holds catfish to 70 pound. That's like bigger and heavier than me. So I'm only like 65 and a half pound, promise. Uh, it's got some great big carps in, lots of, you know, sort of upper doubles into sort of 20 pound. Um, you know, you come on here and get lots of runs. So baits obviously like boilies are gonna work well. Pellets will work well, put a big bed of feed down and just basically spam it over the top and get your chodvigs on. Um, yeah, it's just, it's one of them, as I say, it's catered for the special side of it. 
I like to come on these kind of waters uh, using match style techniques because there's always lots of roach and skimmers and things like that. Things that get overlooked obviously when you're fishing for the bigger fish and if you use maggots and casts on these kind of waters you know you can have a brilliant day on, on the roach certainly when it's a lot colder during the winter. Uh, that covers like most of the lakes here now so uh, I'm going to do a spot of fishing. Bye bye! Here we are then at the Farmer Jack Lake. The last time I was here, probably about three weeks ago, I had a coaching session just up there on Peg 43 and we had well over 100 pounds of mainly F1s but we had some decent sized commons as well. Uh, baits on here, pellets is out and out, key on here. Uh, fishing up in the water, sort of 13 metres, pinging a few four mils, banging a six on the hook, uh, on the band. Uh, you just catch so many fish. Catch a lot of fish short as well but as it's starting to go a little bit colder, them fish are certainly backing off. There's islands as well and on the other arm of the lake uh, you can actually reach the far bank so uh, tactics like the pellet cone or bomb and bread or just bomb and corn they work brilliantly this time of year again because the water's a little bit clearer baits like corn and bread do stand out but without a doubt uh, micros and expanders or hard four mils with a banded six mil just works so well it's, it's lots of carp lots of f1s in here uh, odd skimmers as well like but it's, it's another fantastic water and that's what Stockholm is all about all these brilliant waters to come and have a go at come and get on it yeah Okay, so we're actually here, probably the most famous lake here at Docklo Pools, the Mickey Mouse. It looks absolutely stunning. Just over there where I'm fishing, from as far as the eye can see from here all the way across, there's some dirty great big chubs, there's lots of big carp, I just oh, I can't wait to get going at them. I'm going to be fishing the Waggler today, obviously I'll go over it in more depth when we actually get to the swim, but tactics on here, whenever I've fished it in the past, I've always just fished caster, maggots and pellets close. Um, it's a phenomenal water, it really is, throws up weights, summer and winter, the coldest of cold days, you come on here and you're guaranteed to catch fish, whether it be chub, eyed, roach, it's just a phenomenal fish. I'm just looking at a great big carp now actually, so I think I might have to dob him first go, but yeah, if you come into Docklow, you've simply got to come and give this lake a try, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I can't wait to get going, so uh, I'll see you at me peg in a minute. Beesh! Here we are then on the famous Mickey Mouse Lake. Uh, I've set up just behind us on Peg 8. Um, what I want to do though is just give you a quick rundown on why I picked the actual peg. I mean, it's a bit different for me. Obviously, I, I know the lake. Uh, I've fished it a few times before and I know the peg holds fish, but I want you to get used to like, if you're coming here for the first time or not just this venue, any venue, uh, what makes me pick the peg um, that I have done. What I've gone for today is obviously, it's a cold day, um, I don't really want to be in the wind. If you've got a cold wind where you're fishing, chances are there's not going to be that many fish there. Uh, reason being is obviously the fish just don't want to be in that cold water. They want to try and be out of the wind or in the deeper bit of water. Uh, the other thing as well, um, what I'm fishing today, I'm fishing the waggler, so by a loose feed, I don't want the wind to be in my face because it's just going to go all over the place. So I want it ideally sort of off my back or just a slight breeze coming from left to right or right to left. So that's what I've chosen today. So any, any waters where you're going to this time of year, ideally look to get out of the wind. Now the flip side of that, if it's a warm wind on a, like a winter's day, yeah, by all means, the fish are going to be in it. But also, you know, scour the lake, have a good look at the lake and see if you can see any signs of fish topping or, you know, bubbles coming up, this, that and the other, or a little bit of colour in one area of the lake to another. That's, again, that's obviously signs of fish. Another tip that I'll give you as well is to uh, cast a, a little bomb out uh, and then look for liners, you know, basically looking, looking for signs of fish. You know, start off at sort of like uh, 10 o'clock, then just work your way around to sort of 2 o'clock and wherever you're getting liners, make a note of it. And that's another another tip I'll give you. It work, does work really well. Um, so, yeah, that's I just wanted to give you a brief, uh, you know, insight into why, you know, I pick the certain, you know, sort of swims that I do. 
uh, and that's about it so just bear it in mind if you're in the wind when it's cold ideally you don't really want to be there so certainly pleasure fishing wise always look to get out of the wind now let's go and snare some fish and i'll talk you exactly through the rig that i'm using today Boosh. It won't pull these leaves, mate, be fucking get them whenever you go in. What I mean? Chub. Chub, chub, chub. Lovely chubbly. Lovely chubbly. Don't want to catch some dirty vermin, do we? Look at them. Best fish in the world, then, mate. Oh, yeah, that's a chub. Yeah, but they would only stop, like, It's perfect for them in here, though, isn't it? Perfect for them. <laughs> Deesh! Lovely these eyes, they're growing these on us, aren't they? Look at that beauty. Look at that. These. Come here. Another lovely eyed. Probably getting on for a pound this time. Lots of fish out there just under the surface now, but they're really spooky. You know, you've got to sort of feed, get their, uh, get their interest going, cast in over the top and then they'll see your bait and nail it. And get this in the net with the others. Um, if you leave it settled, I'm not interested at all, I've not had a bite on the bottom yet. Been fishing probably half an hour now, probably got eight or nine eyed in like 12 or 13 chub or something. So lovely on a day like this where it's really cold. Uh, I'm just going to keep plugging away basically. Um, odd little roach starting to come in as well. In between sort of the tree roots and the lilies, there's like a, you can see a shoulder cart, but if I went for them on this gear, there's no chance I'd be getting them out. Uh, and if I tried to fish a bit heavy for them, I probably wouldn't get a bite in the first place. I've had to go lighter as it is anyway. I've started off on 0.14, just in case, see what it was about. I've had a few early chub, but then I had to step down to a 0.12 and then 18 zuck. Um, in fact, let's go through the, the rig in a bit more detail. Don't mind me. I've just got to keep these fish on the go. I'm just going to ping a few more casters in. Beesh. Right then, the setup, the all important waggler setup. I've got a lot of fish competing out there now. Literally, as soon as I ping them casters in, the fish are coming into it. So, the setup that I've chosen today for this particular style is to fish on the drop. I've only got sort of three, three and a half foot out there. It's not deep at all. So I'm choosing to fish a light waggler, which we'll come on to in a second, uh, with minimal shot down the line. I've literally got three number 11s spread over sort of three and a half foot. Let's come on to the setup itself. So things that you'll need for this, you'll need a real soft waggler rod. This is a Matt Parabolics 13 foot light waggler. And the reason for a light waggler is 
when you're striking into the fish, certainly like Hyde and Chubb, certainly Chubb, when you're striking into them, they tend to like be all angry and charge off when you hook them. So you want a nice soft rod so it cushions them lunges when they try and get into lily pads or tree roots. Oh, but I love them. Um, we've got a, a nice small reel there. It's only sort of between the two and a half thousand and three thousand reel. Now line choice, it's an area a lot of anglers struggle with line. Um, they tend to go too heavy. Again, as soon as you hear the word carp, a lot of anglers think, oh, feeding machines, that's fish dead heavy. We've only got a really light waggler on. So if I was to put sort of diameter 0.20 or 0.22 line through there, the actual friction for your rod rings, you wouldn't get the distance. Now, bearing in mind, obviously, I'm only catapulting these casters probably about 20, 22 metres, something like that. And that's the whole essence of waggler fishing, you know, just to fish and feed comfortably where you can get that bait. If I was to fish too heavy a line, I wouldn't be able to get that distance with the waggler I'm using. We'll come on to why I've chosen the waggler in a sec. But basically, I've got 0.16 um, Matt Power Optex line on that. Now, coming to the rig itself, really easy setup. Again, there's no need, no need for you to struggle with the setup. Let's say it's set sort of like three and a half foot. We've got a nice long hook length on. Now that's a 12 inch hook length. Um, I started off on 0.14 and I've had a few quick fish on it, but I changed on to 0.12 and I'm getting much quicker bites. Literally as soon as I cast in, I'm getting a bite straight away. So a 0.12 and an 18's hook. Now I'll show you how I hook the maggot and, and all that in a, in a sec. But basically nothing on that hook length whatsoever. I've got it loop to loop. <clears throat> and then you see just above that loop there, I've got my first shot. Now that's a number 11. Now sort of eight or nine inches above that, I've got another number 11, another eight or nine inches, another number 11, and then what's that? Probably 14 to 16 inches above that, I've actually got my float. Now, the flow is a 1.5 gram Drennan loaded insert. Now, I'll always fish loaded floats, and the reason I'll fish a loaded float rather than unloaded is because you see here these little tiny dust shot, these are number eights. I can use lead, obviously legally, up to size eight. Now the trouble with using an unloaded float, you'd have to put your non-toxic shot on the line, you know, sort of sixes, fours, BBs, stuff like that. Now what that does, that just damages your line. I know there's way around it, you know, you could put a bit of silicon on and put your shots over that or double line it, this, that and the other. But for me, these sort of like, these loaded floats are, are miles better. They allow you to put more shot on, but less weight. So as I say, I've got sort of four number eights one side, the side that you're going to sort of cast it off, always put more weight that side. Uh, and I've got three number eights the other side. I've just got a couple of number 10 shot, just to lock that in place as well. Now you'll see that waggler's sliding a little bit on that. Now that's, that's very important for when you're sort of striking into the fish. What you don't want is for that float to be fixed like that, because there's no give in the waggler at all. So if you had a little bit of a gap in between it, when you go to strike into the fish, hopefully a three pound chub, what's going to happen is that waggler is going to collapse on your line so you direct to the fish it's a it's a it's a brilliant tactic and it does work really well now the other advantage i've got <clears throat> you see i've got um, this waggler and a little tiny rubber attachment there so should the wind get up it's not going to get up today it's flat calm and lovely but should it get up i can change that waggler in an instant put a heavier one on perfect no problem at all for that right we'll come back down to the hook choice and why i've chosen this hook so it's an 18s hook i said i started off on a 16s but the reason i've gone to an 18s is um it's a lot finer as it's falling through the water these fish they've seen it all before they can be an absolute nightmare at times to catch certainly hide and chub that you know they're very very wary and especially with this sun <sighs> trust me as soon as you catapult that bait and the fish is straight on it so if your hook bait's not acting natural you won't catch them if your hook bait's falling that little bit too fast again you won't catch them so i've had to come on a smaller hook uh, normally I'd be on more sort of traditional, traditional like maggot hook, like a, a B610, a Kamasan B610 or a Kamasan B510, but I've actually got a, a, a Gamagatsu BB, 2260BB hook on today. It's very, very light and it's just that little bit bigger, so it allow me to put like double maggot on and mask that hook even more. There's another way of hooking the maggot, which is through the side, which I'll uh, show you in a sec. Uh, but basically, it's all about keeping that feed going in. What you'll see me do, I'll, I'll ping out some casters, roughly sort of 12 to 15, and cast in straight away over it. But then what can happen, certainly off them crafty chub and the hide, they'll get used to your feeding pattern. So what you've got to do is feed, feed again, and then cast in over it. Sometimes you've got to sort of like give them, 
literally two or three casters and then maybe eight or ten casters and then cast into it other times you know feed just before you wind your, your rig back and then cast into it over that you've got to keep adapting to how the fish are changing all the time they will get used to it i mean there's a lot of fish there competing so it's not much of a problem when you're pleasure fishing but certainly match wise it, it does make a bit of a difference so uh, yeah, we'll go through our hook and maggot in a sec, um, but you know, that, that's my simple way of uh, catching fish on a waggler. It's, there's nothing complicated with it. The other quick tip I'll give you, when you're going to cast out, make sure you feather the float just before it hits the water. So what I tend to do, I'll watch it back over me, go to cast out, watch that waggler through the, through the air, about three or four foot just above the water surface, I completely stop the line. I'll actually put my me, me fingers on the, on the spool. Uh, and what that does, that brings the waggler back and then your hook bait is fired past your float. So you've got that nice tight line from where your float is right the way to your hook bait. So it's falling on that nice tight line. So when you get a bite, you're straight into them. Right, let me show you how to hook that maggot. Hooking the maggot then, something that's very important. And you might think, well, what are you going on about, you big bald-headed northern monkey? Hooking a maggot? I can hook a maggot. You just put it on your hook, chuck it in, and the fish takes it. If we need it that simple. So the traditional way of hooking the maggot, get the best chub bait out in the world, white maggot. Oh, Basically, is hooking it through that little frilly bit on the fattest end of the maggot. Come on, wriggle. So it still has plenty of wriggle on it. The main thing is that you don't burst it. You can't burst that maggot. If you burst it, forget about it. So that's the traditional way of hooking a maggot. And obviously, if you wanted to put a double maggot on, you go through the opposite end. So you just go through the little pointy bit. So you've got two maggots on there. But by far the best way of hooking a maggot, when you've got fast biting fish like iron and chub, is to get the maggot, squeeze it, fold it over, and then what you've got to do is hook it through one of the segments so that you can see how that's hooked now. It's hooked through the side. If you watch how all maggots fall through the water, they always fall sort of flat side down, and that just confuses the fish. The fish are basically coming in at that angle, nailing it, and that's it, it's on. Again, don't get me wrong, you're still gonna miss some bites, but when bites are hard to hit, trust me, that will put more fish in your net. So there's another species that the Mickey Mouse Lake's famous for, the eyed. Uh, typical average stamp, again, similar to like them, two always catching sort of 10 ounces to a pound. There's odd one, sort of two, two and a half, but when, you, ooh, <laughs> when you've got a lot of them in your peg, you know, you can, can easily do away uh, the proper, put this in the net, the proper shellfish. Uh, so when you get one, they're not nomad, you normally get a lot of them there. And as I'm feeding the casters, I'm seeing swirls just under the surface. So there's quite a few fish out there now. I'm going to get myself snarled up in some more. Yes. Wowzers, look at this for a red fin. I was all snarled up in Iden Chub, but look at that one. Oh, stunning. About four ounces. Yeah, proper roaches. Beautiful, that. Man, a few more of them. Be good there, mate. On this peg? No. I don't call myself a professional, I just blag it. <laughs> Did you not point in my general direction? <laughs> What, mate? I'd like to do it, but I'm just 
Beautiful job. No, casters. <laughs> casters. <laughs> he says the noise of the casters. No, casters. <laughs> He's a northern monkey, isn't he? <laughs> One has to know ours. You know a monkey giving it all that? Yeah. What was he catching, Jonathan? Eyed? Yeah. About the real nice colour in there. Getting bigger now, aren't they? <laughs> well then, I was about that just over an hour's fishing. Probably a good 25, 30 pound there of mainly hide and chub. We had a few roach as well. Just goes to show you like the brilliant sport you can have here at Docklow. It's absolutely amazing. Um, had some big fish, you know, I've had some big chunky hide like that, sort of 12 ounce a pound. Got some chub in there to get in on for two pound. No, simple tactics, you know, it's just regular feeding, keeping that bait going in and keep ringing the changes certainly with your feeding patterns. Remember, double feed, single feed, feed just before you wind it back, cast into it and make sure you try that tip about side hooking the maggot. It will put more fish in your net. I'm going to put these fish back to fight another day, so make sure you come and try Docklow Pools. The food's awesome too. Beesh! <laughs>